Good evening. I'm Carmel Travers. Tonight, our program, Towards 2000, will show you the work of doctors at the Eye and Ear Hospital in Melbourne. At this hospital, doctors have made a device called the bionic ear. For some nerve-deaf people, the bionic ear could help them hear again. Signing is the language used by some of the profoundly deaf, whose handicap is invisible and of immeasurable proportion. It's a social handicap, a difficulty in communicating with the hearing 99.9% .9 of the population. The bionic ear could change all of that. Jennifer Dawson, now 24, has been totally deaf since she was 13. She's an excellent lip reader, but that has its limitations. With the bionic ear, or more accurately, a multiple electrode cochlear implant device, and with a lot of training, Jennifer can now hear. Telephone. That's good. Now listen to the next one. <laughs> Essentially, what Jennifer is listening to are normal sounds converted by a speech processor into electrical impulses inside the inner ear. The challenge faced by scientists was enormous, to translate electronically and reproduce all the intricacies of human speech. They could have been an orchestra. And just to give you some idea of how quickly all this development has occurred, just four years ago, the University of Melbourne under Professor Graham Clark produced this massive but very effective speech processor. The bionic ear, as it's now known, consists of three components. The speech processor, this headset, which is very light and unobtrusive, and contains a tiny microphone here at the side and an external coil which sits behind the ear and this, the implanted device which consists of a receiver stimulator and an electrode array along which the electricity passes and stimulates the auditory nerves allowing speech and other sounds to be heard. Not only does the bionic ear signal a new step in miniaturization, but it opens up what was previously a no-go area for surgeons, the inner ear. In the cochlear implant operation, the mastoid bone is shaved back and the receiver implanted. The electrode array is then threaded through the middle ear and into the inner ear. So far, six adults have received the device, with clinical trials on another 300 patients soon to begin. The external microphone at the back of the patient's ear picks up sounds and transmits them by wire to the processor. The processor is set to the specific requirements of each patient and encodes those signals before sending them back up to the ear. The messages are transmitted into the ear through the skin where they are decoded by a receiver coil and sent into the cochlea. From there, they travel to the brain as sound. George Watson, aged 66, was deafened by bomb blast during the Second World War. He remained totally deaf for almost 40 years until he received a cochlear implant. George, I'm going to take it up to when it's comfortable. Tell me when it's comfortable. All right. Being able to hear, he said, made him feel alive again. His speech processor is still being programmed. An electronic map of his hearing thresholds and responses to sound is being drawn. That's comfortable. Do you want it up a little bit? 
down a little bit. Oh, we can put it up one. Now in between. Okay. That's okay. good. Okay. George, we're going to switch on to some speech now. Right. The bionic ear, implanted last November, has already doubled his understanding of sounds. George, what do you think of the speech processor? I think it's great, but it's not perfect. There's room for improvement, which I'm sure will come. But to me, it's like a breath of life. What do your grandchildren think about all of your machinery? <laughs> the young children, I think, that they are beginning to really think that I am a bionic man because the red light flashes on and off as you talk in the processor and they stare at it sometimes and I think they are beginning to wonder. Here's an example of what George is hearing. What the car just read and interpreted as the sound that he was hearing is, we are going to Queensland for our holidays. Here it is again. And you'll notice that as the card passes through the recorder, the receiver stimulator monitor on the bottom with these lights indicates which of the 22 electrodes is being stimulated by the various speech sounds. With the cochlear implant operation still in its clinical trial phase, every moment of triumph is well recorded. Here in this in-house video, the first trial of a recipient of the implant is monitored. Mm -hmm. Graham Carrick, now 38, has been totally deaf since he was 21. This trial was carried out three weeks after the operation in September last year. During the test, tonal sound was taken up to very high levels, but still Graham heard nothing. Could it be that the external coil needed repositioning? It must sit directly behind the implanted receiver. As soon as the adjustment was made, there was great excitement. Graham Carrick was hearing again for the first time in 18 years. <laughs> getting a strange reaction. Fantastic. Oh, boom. Oh. Fantastic. Yeah.